This is poison ivy, our friend, okay? Um, again, we're not requiring this, but I want you to learn it. So poison ivy, as you know, causes nasty skin irritation. Uh, there's an oil in it called urethiol, um, and it's an oil that reacts with your the proteins in your skin tissues and um, causes you to break out. Now, not everybody is susceptible to poison ivy um, as others. I didn't get it till I was about 35 years old working in my garden when I was pulling it. I wore uh, gloves and I got it just above my glove line from the roots that were coming out of it. So um, it is nasty. You kind of have to, some people can just brush against it and get it. Other people um, have to break the leaves or bruise the leaves or twigs. Uh, all, all parts of the plant have the oil in it. Okay, so. Um, and generally the more you're exposed to it, the more susceptible you are to it. But this is it, okay? Uh, it's got leaflets, okay, compound leaves, leaflets three, let it be, right? So this is the leaf here. Um, it's highly, highly variable. Now a lot of people say, well, poison oak, I got poison oak. Well, there is no poison oak in Michigan. Uh, more than likely you got poison ivy. It doesn't really matter, it's the same oil. Um, but a lot of people identify poison ivy as poison oak when it starts to get more uh, teeth on it like this. So generally um, poison ivy, is, I mean it's something you got to learn to see. The top leaflet, the stalk on the top leaflet tends to be longer than the bottom two stalks and you tend to get more teeth towards the base of the leaflet than towards the top. Sometimes they have these things that people identify as thumbs where there's one big tooth. Okay, um, but that's all highly variable and I'll show you some variation in a minute. This can grow as a shrub or as a vine. So this is the Eastern poison ivy. There is a Western poison ivy as well. That's found only in the North and I'll show you that a little bit later. Um, the buds of poison ivy, I don't know how well you can see that. They kind of look literally like a middle finger. <laughs> like it's, you're getting the middle finger. And I don't know if that's going to come out or not. Uh, on the video, but um, they're kind of a brown fuzzy bud, uh, slightly fuzzy, and it literally looks like it's flipping you the bird, okay? Um, the other thing about the eastern poison ivy is that the petiole here is pubescent. If you want to run your fingers on that to see if it's pubescent, go ahead. But that's one of the ways you tell it from the western poison ivy, is the western poison ivy does not have a pubescent petiole. Okay, so this is, again, so you can see, here's my hand for scale, okay? Um, so this is only, you know, eight inches high. It can grow as a shrub. It can also grow as a vine, and I'll show you some vine versions in a minute. This is another shot of poison ivy. So all of this here is all poison ivy, and you can see it's smaller, but the leaves have a lot less teeth on them. So here's a leaf right here that has almost no teeth at all. Here's a leaf, small leaf right here that only has the thumbs, okay? And then you, here's another one with almost no teeth at all. So these leaves can be highly, highly variable. Um, even when they get lots of rounded teeth and start to look like an oak leaf, it is not poison oak. It is just poison ivy with highly variable leaves. So here's an example of a poison ivy vine growing up and off of a oak. Okay, so let me skin around, spin around here. Here are the vines, okay? Um, the vines, they look like vines, the, they have rootlets. So they don't have anything but little roots that grow right into the outer bark of the tree. Okay, and that's how they affix themselves and you can see it growing all the way up. And if you look up, those leaves that are sticking way out, those are poison ivy, okay? so. Um, the eastern version of poison ivy will grow up something if it finds something to grow up and then out and off of the tree. So as you're walking along, this is almost perfectly face level and bam, you get it in the face. Okay. Um, see if I can get right there um, is the, the bud again that to me looks just like a middle finger sticking out. But um, So poison ivy is, is nasty. <laughs> I hate it. Um, it is native, but I, I hate it. And you can see um, these things are sticking off like three feet off of this tree. So uh, almost just waiting to give it to somebody. If I spin around here, you can see there's more of it kind of hanging off of hanging off of this tree. But so, so the eastern version um, can grow as a vine like this. 
or it can grow kind of along the ground, trail along the ground or grow as a shrub. The western version does not, does not vine up like this. It's always a shrub version, okay? Um, the fruit, if you ever see it, they're white generally or, or an off-white color. They kind of look like a peeled orange. Um, they're very interesting, but I don't, not interesting enough for me to find them and touch them, okay? Uh, and by the way, the best way to get poison ivy, if you've touched poison ivy and you're worried about it, the faster you can get rubbing alcohol on the place where you touched poison ivy, the better because that rubbing alcohol will help to break down the oil and get it off of your skin, okay? Short of that, wash in cold water, don't wash in warm water. Warm water will open up your pores and get it further into your skin. Okay, so that's uh, poison ivy. So this is the Western poison ivy. Um, it looks a little bit different. It looks quite different than some of the poison ivy we were seeing downstate, and it usually doesn't look this different, but uh, there are a lot of similarities. You, again, you see that it has three leaflets, okay? And the, the end leaflet, the one that's not paired, is on a little bit longer stalk than the other two. These particular one have, these, this particular specimen has really big teeth. Again, highly variable from plant to plant. Um, the main thing here, he still has that middle finger bud in there. I'm not sure how easy you can see it. Uh, but the petiole of the leaf is glabrous. There's no pubescence on it at all. And the other thing is that it is in shrub form. It's not trailing really, and it's not climbing, um, which is specific to the western species versus the eastern species so um basically the way to tell it apart there's three ways as i can see it one is the no hair on the petiole in the western one compared to the eastern one two is it's always a shrub form it's never a vine form like the eastern one can be and three it's in the north so um according to the botanists you know the the north of say claire um, it's all the western poison ivy, and south of Clare, it's all the eastern poison ivy. I'm sure there's some mixing right around that area, um, but we're almost to the Mackinac Bridge, so pretty confident this has to be western poison ivy. Just another shot of a different uh, plant of western poison ivy, so here it is right here. Um, you can still see that the terminal leaflet is on a longer stalk than the others and there's no hair on the petiole um, and again this is a shrubby form don't confuse it with this there's a lot of sugar maple seedlings in here we're looking at the one with three leaflets so right there and right there and right there and right there and right there so and right there um, so that that is uh western poison ivy so this is poison sumac it is a high shrub okay it can get pretty tall um this one is about eight feet high. You can see one back there, um, right there. That's even a little bit bigger. That one's probably 20 or 30 feet high. Um, yeah, this is a swamp species. It only grows in, in wet areas, okay? It's got compound leaves. Um, they're kind of, they're stark. So the leaflets kind of are in contrast to the petiole, the, <clears throat> the petiole that connects all the leaflets to the twig. Um, the petiole is kind of red, or the rachis is, is what it's called, and the leaflets are kind of a dark green and then pale green on the bottom. So they're, they, uh, they're pretty stark, right? Um, the other thing is that the, the leaflets kind of stand up off of that petiole like a butterfly, okay? Uh, they're kind of upswept off of the, the red petiole, which is distinctive as well. The leaves turn a very, very pretty um, red, these are just starting to change. They turn a bright orange or red in the fall, okay? Uh, I don't know if you can see that bright red back there. That is poison sumac that's changed, okay? So these are, uh, the twigs are very coarse. Um, they don't really have, they're not really fine textured at all. They almost look dead. And the one, this one right here actually is dead. But that's what the live twigs look like as well. Um, very, very toxic. As you know, this is even more the oil, the ureshiol oil in poison sumac is even more concentrated than it is in poison ivy. Um, and it can actually collect, because it grows in swamps, it can collect on the surface of the water. So if you 
are splashing through a swamp, you can actually uh, still get the oil on you just from touching the water. So uh, poison, but, it, but the good thing is it is a swamp species. This one is growing on the edge of a swamp. Um, it's a shrub dominant in the swamp. Uh, so unless you're running through swamps, you're not likely to, um, to run into it, although this one is right alongside the trail. And I wonder how many people actually brush against it when they're, when they're walking by. But that's, that's poison sumac.